Happy New Year. 2020 is behind us now. Welcome to 2021. Blessings on the new year. Today we'll see when we are to be still and when we are to move on. From my time in the military, I can relate to this. Uh, being a soldier, when to be still and when receiving orders and when to move out and, and uh, carry them out. But today we're going to hear when to be still and when to move on from God's Word. This morning our uh, scripture reading is from the book of Colossians where God tells us how, gives an example of how we're supposed to interact with others and why. We read, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all, these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and teach you to and admonish one another with all wisdom and using so, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Hey, welcome from uh, the sunny beaches of Florida. This is Pastor Mike coming at you. Uh, this is wrapping up our vacation in the panhandle of, of Florida. And I uh, thought it'd be fun to, to bring you a message uh, with that in the background. So Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, we've made it to 2021. And I pray that the year ahead has many blessings, um, whether that's Blessings that come from challenges or the opportunities that God gives you. You know, as we, as we think about the, the year ahead, perhaps you've spent some time over the last uh, few days evaluating 2020. Or maybe you're just glad that we've made it to 2021. You know, as you, as you look at, at the year past, there are certainly things that uh, have brought you joy, perhaps things that have brought you uh, challenges, uh, things that have uh, created great memories and some that you would care to forget. And so as we, as we move into 2021, um, I, wanted to, I wanted to share a, a few thoughts from um, another beach account, so to speak, that uh, I pray will be a blessing to you as we go into the new year. And as you consider uh, what's ahead, um, I don't know what's ahead. Uh, just like when we enter 2020, you can have predictions and you can have uh, ideas based on past trends, but 2020 kind of blew that up. So what's ahead of us in 2021? Uh, no one really knows from an earthly standpoint and from uh, what we'll uh, have an opportunity to, to engage in or not engage in, um, whether the vaccine will, will remove some of the um, fear around COVID or if there'll be new strains. Um, we have uh, an election uh, and transition in, in presidency. Um, we have things going on politically. We have things going on medically. We have things going on in our communities, in our families, in our relationships, marriages, families, etc. And so all of those uh, have opportunity to both uh, detract from the year ahead from the standpoint of uh, creating challenges that maybe are difficult or adding value and adding joy to our lives as we, as we move forward. And so today, um, th the theme is going to sound kind of goofy, but um, it's kind of a, a clash of terms to be still and get a move on. And I like these two phrases because in 2021, there's going to be times where the Lord is going to invite us to be still. And then he's going to, in essence, say, get off your butt and move forward. So uh, the account that I want to spend some time in this morning is from, from Exodus chapter 14. And where, where this occurs in Israel's history, Exodus um, is the time of Moses' leadership. And the people of Israel had just been delivered. The Passover is in chapter 12 of Exodus, where God delivered the people from um, the, the, the Pharaoh and the slavery that they're under for, for many years. 
And they, were, they had cried out to the Lord for deliverance and God raised up Moses and he brought about the 10 plagues and the, the 10th plague was the plague of death on the firstborn and the, the lamb, the blood from the lamb saved those that put it on their doorpost. And then that night, God said, be ready to go because as soon as this plague takes place, Pharaoh's gonna say, get out. So that's what happened in chapter 12 and chapter 13. And now <clears throat> the people are, are out in the desert away from Egypt and they, they have... Uh, the beach in front of them, the Red Sea, and you go, hey, you know, hanging out on the beach, that, that'd be a great place to be. But not, not in this case, because there were cliffs on both sides, and uh, army, the army of Pharaoh was pursuing them. Pharaoh realized, you know what, I just told my whole workforce to get out of Egypt. And then I'm going to, it's a little bit longer section, but I'm just going to read the whole chapter. And, and I want you to maybe just have God bring to mind the things that stand out to you in regard to this account as we move into 2021, but especially look for the phrases, and I'll pause on them when I get to them, of where the Lord says, be still, and then when he says, get a move on, and we'll find three things that we want to be still on and two things that we want to get a move on. So here it is, uh, Exodus chapter 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Piharoth, between Migdol and the sea. They are in, to encamp by the sea directly opposite Baal Zephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of his best chariots along with all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly the Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they encamped by the sea near pi Haroth, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us into the desert to die? What have you done to us? by bringing us out of Egypt. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front of them and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. 
Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. So that's, that's the beach account that we want to look at this morning. It's kind of interesting. Like you said, you know, any, any time you're, you're on the beach is a good thing. But in this case, uh, it was not a good thing. Where the armies of Pharaoh were behind them, the cliffs on either side, and the water in front of them. And it's interesting because as the people heard about this, they cried out and said, it, it would be better for us to be back in Egypt under slavery than it is to die in the desert. They said, Moses, was there not enough graves in Egypt that we had to come out here and die? And it's interesting because as we look at 2021, I, I don't know what the, what the year ahead holds for any one of us or us collectively. But perhaps at some point in 2021, we'll look back and go, can we just go back to 2020? I mean, can you imagine what would lead you to uh, have that response and say, you know, things, things were so much better back in 2020 than they are here in 2021? I don't know. It could happen. The Israelites said, you know, it's worse to die out here in the desert and be pummeled by the, the Egyptian army than go back and be slaves for the rest of our life. They, they thought it was better to go back than to go forward. So what can we learn from this? Moses tells the people, as the army of Egypt is around them, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And then the very next sentence, the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on, to move forward. So what's the balance as we go into 2021? Where does the Lord desire us to be still? And where does he want us to move on? Well, the first thing that stands out is to be still and turn to the Lord. Be still and turn to the Lord. The Israelites, they looked at their condition and said, there's, there's no way we're going to beat the, the Egyptian army. There's just no way. They're bigger, stronger, more powerful. We're all, we're all going to die. We're all going to die here in the desert. And so they were ready to turn from the deliverance the Lord had given and go back to slavery. They thought that was the better option. But Moses reminds them, hold on a minute. Turn to the Lord. He's the one who, who delivered you out here, and he's the one who's going to fight for you. The Lord is, is bigger, stronger, more powerful than the Egyptian army. There's actually freedom to be found turning to the Lord and being led by the Lord. And so Moses says, don't, don't turn your eyes and your hearts back to Egypt, what you think was better. And even though the future seems uncertain from a human perspective, it seems like this is not going to end well. But he says, turn to the Lord. And isn't that a great reminder as we move into 2021? That we may encounter things in our year ahead that we think, you know what? I, I just want to go back to the way it was. Because it's unfamiliar. The outcome is uncertain. It's perhaps scary. And, and we don't know what, what the end result is going to be. And so we want to, we want to turn back to the ways that that we knew, that we are familiar, that we could handle, that we could control. But perhaps God is leading us forward. And perhaps the obstacle is bigger than we can understand because he wants to teach us a lesson. The thing God didn't want his people to do was to turn away from him. He was the one who had delivered them. He wanted them to turn to him even when, from an earthly standpoint, it didn't seem like things were going to end well. God's encouragement is when we see ourselves drifting away from him, is just to stop, to be still, and to ask yourself, where is my heart, where is my mind oriented? Is it oriented to the Lord, 
or is it oriented away from the Lord? And as our hearts and minds and actions are oriented to the Lord, he'll lead us forward. He'll eventually encourage us, get a move on. But he wants to first orient our hearts to him instead of from him. Secondly, be still and remember what the Lord has done. The Israelites were so quick to forget. And it's easy to look at them and go, how could they forget? They just got delivered from Egypt. Thought they could never get out of slavery. And God used this, this plague, this miracle, and the deliverance with the blood of the lamb and all that to get them out of Egypt and out of the slavery they had been crying out to God to deliver them from. And as soon as an obstacle occurred, they kind of forgot. They, they forgot what the Lord had already done. They forgot that they had nothing to do with delivering themselves from Egypt. It's not like the Israelites go, hey, let's get a big army and let's overcome. Let's have a battle. We'll fight Pharaoh and his chariots and an army and we'll win and we'll take over Egypt and we'll, we'll leave, whatever the case may be. No, they, they didn't lift a finger except to follow God's word of direction to, to slaughter the lamb and put the blood over the doorpost. And God did the rest. God is the one who led them out. And now they're facing another obstacle and they quickly forget what God had already done. It's easy to look at the Israelites and go, man, how could they so easily forget? But then I look at my own heart and my own life and I realize how quickly I forget what God has done in my life. I forget the blessings that he's given me in the past. I, get, I forget the challenges that he's seen me through and I, I forget the blessings that have come through the good times and the, and the bad times. And it's easy to look at our current situation and go, where did God go? How come he's not blessing me? How come he's not with me? That we're going to all die in this and, and God doesn't care. And we turn away from the Lord and we forget what the Lord is doing. And so when you, when you sense yourself doing that in 2021, be still and remember what the Lord has done. And the greatest thing that the Lord has done that, that will never change is the reality that he, he took your sins to the cross he sent his son, Jesus. We celebrated that just a few weeks ago with, with Christmas. We don't want to forget that moving into, into January of 2021. And, and as we move forward, we get to celebrate Easter and his resurrection from the dead after his conquering death on the cross. And all these things God has done. These are, these are historical realities with spiritual impact. But God has done. God has secured heaven for you. So no matter what happens in 2021, the worst that can happen is maybe even the best. We end up in heaven because of Jesus. I don't know what the year ahead holds, and I don't propose to try and project it for you or for me or for anyone for that matter. But I do know that God wants us to be still and remember what he has done and know that he will be faithful and he will act on our behalf. Be still and the Lord will fight for you. Third, be still and watch the Lord act. Is it not true uh, in your life that you try all the things you can think of first? You try and solve an issue with, with your intellect, with your mind, with the resources that you have and the options that you can concoct. And, and then you realize in the, in the end uh, that didn't work. <laughs> and maybe you try again and rethink it and maybe you ask for advice and input. All those things can be a good thing. But then you you realize, I, I have no idea. I have no, I have no clue how to, how to deal with this. The Israelites had no clue how to get off that beach alive. They were hemmed in, cliffs on either side, the water in front, the army of Pharaoh in the back. And Moses said, you're, you're not going to figure out this on your own. And you can imagine some of the Israelites are like, hey, let's get our swords. Hey, who's going to fight? Who's going to lead us? We'll get this together and we'll take on the army of Pharaoh. Better to, dry, to die trying than to not have tried at all. And maybe some of them in the camp are thinking that. And Moses says, relax. Be still and watch God act. And act he did. The pillar of, of, of cloud created darkness on the Egyptian side and created light on the Israelite side. The Lord allowed a wind, and as Moses stretched uh, his, his staff over the Red Sea, the waters parted. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, you, you maybe see it in movies and that sort of thing. But, you know, being out on the, on the beach and just thinking about, 
the, uh, the water's parting in front of me and walking across, you know, the Gulf back to Texas. I don't know, like that, that'd be kind of weird, but you know, that's, <clears throat> that's the power of God at work. And he created a dry path through the waters for Israelite to cross on. Who would have imagined? That wasn't in Moses' tool bag. That wasn't something the Army Corps of Engineers could have constructed. It was something only God could do. And Moses said, be still. He was confident the power of God would work and the power of God would act. And he said, just watch. God's gonna show up. I'm confident God will show up in your 2021. And maybe, perhaps, instead of using God as a last resort, maybe it's shifting to use him as a first resort. And go, God, I, I don't know how to deal with this issue. I don't know what's ahead. I don't know how to get around it. I don't see any solution. But I'm just going to be still and be open to your activity and how you want to act. As soon as Moses encouraged them to be still and watch the Lord act, God said, why are you crying out to me? Get a move on. Move forward. I don't know what I would have thought to be the first one in that army, that camp of Israel, to step off the beach into the shallow water, maybe okay. But as those walls of water kind of got up to my shoulders and then over my head, and I'm kind of looking up on one side and looking up on the other side, it might be a little tentative to go, do we want to keep going through this? And then you're like, uh, come on, kids, let's keep going. God wanted Moses to encourage the people to get a move on with confidence of the Lord's power. God's strength was mightier than that of Pharaoh. And through the mouth of, of Moses, he told the people, you're, you're going to see the glory of the Lord shown in the defeat of the Pharaoh's army. And even though they couldn't see it, how it was going to work, God's power was going to make it work. And make it work, it did. God doesn't promise to part the waters inherently in front of us. But he does put before us the reality of his power. And oftentimes, where we see his power the most, and perhaps reasons why he allows us moments of weakness, is so that his power might be more evident. Because when we're hustling and trying to figure it out, we're using our strength and our mind and intellect, he goes, okay, go for it, try it. And he knows they'll try, but they're not going to figure it out. But when the Lord goes to work, we can take those steps of faith boldly, even though I don't know where the other side is or I don't know how I'm going to get there. When the Lord is leading, I can move forward with the confidence of God's power. The Apostle Paul cried out to the Lord many times to, to take his thorn in the flesh. We don't know exactly what it was. Perhaps it was, it was eyesight, uh, many suggest. It might have been something else. And, and finally, God taught him. He says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. One of the great realities of, of God's power is shown in the cross. And his power to defeat the consequence of sin and overcome the reality of what Satan did is greater than any power we have. And as we move into 2021, the reality is God has connected you to the power that he showed when he rose Jesus from, raised Jesus from the dead. He's showing us his power each and every day by connecting us to his love, to his grace. And the one who created the universe can certainly move the universe. The one who allows governments to be formed certainly can utilize those governments. Just like we looked at back at Christmas with Caesar Augustus. He had no idea God was using him, but God's power was using him to get Jesus to be born exactly where he had promised. We don't know where God is working, how he is working all the time, but we can move forward confident that the power of God is at work. And finally, we can move forward and get a move on confident of the Lord's promises. This is the greatest thing 
as, as believers, as Christ followers, that we go forward into 2021 with promises that God has been consistently fulfilling for many years. The promise that Israel was living under is that God would form and preserve that nation to bring Jesus from that nation. God was not going to let his people see demise, even though they, 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 came, they came pretty close at times where God says, I, I give up. And Moses said, these are not my people, these are your people, and you need to save them. Moses knew the promises of God. Moses held God to his promises. And as God promised, I'm going to see, you're going to see my glory through the army of Pharaoh on this day, sure enough, as those waters came crashing in and the armies of Pharaoh were demolished under the waters, not a single Israelite lost their life just as God had promised. God didn't bring them out in the desert to die. God brought them out of Egypt to show them the promised land. God didn't bring us into 2021 to create hardship and wish that we were back in 2020. He brought us into 2021 to lead us forward with his promises, to see in front of us the opportunities that he's given us. I don't know what your favorite promise is. Perhaps it's an opportunity this time of year and say, let me choose a promise of God that I'm going I'm I'm to carry with me. You know, maybe, it's, maybe it's one like, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. That promise that, that God is always with you, no matter what or where you are. Maybe it's a, a, a promise of, of his forgiveness. God is faithful and just. As I confess to him, he will forgive me. Maybe it's a, a promise of, of his protection and preservation that I'm convinced that neither height nor depth, neither angels or demons, nothing in all creation can separate me from God's love. I don't know. What is, what is your favorite promise? Which one are you going to carry into 2021? Because we can move forward confident of those promises. God's been faithful in the past. He will be faithful in the present and faithful in the future. Here's one that seems to capture all of what we've been talking about this morning. This is from Isaiah chapter 43, a few verses, 16, 18, and 19. And Isaiah, this story, this account of this beach episode of God's deliverance passed down through the generations of Israelites and made an impact on generation after generation of the power and promises of God, of how important it is to, to turn to God, to remember what God has done, and then to watch the Lord work. And Isaiah was inspired to pen this. He says, this is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. This identifies who the Lord is. The, the one who drove the waters to their sides and crushed the Egyptian army. This is the Lord we're talking about. He says, forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. 2020 is in the rearview mirror. And whatever those experiences, whatever those uh, opportunities, whatever God has taught you in 2021, 2020, in some ways he says, forget the former things. Don't turn back, but look forward. And look forward knowing that, that God's doing new things for you, for your family, for us as a congregation, our community, our country. I don't know what they all are, but I know that we can move forward with the confidence that God has. The, the confidence that God has given us, that he's exhibited in Exodus chapter 14, the deliverance of Israel through the waters of the Red Sea, and I'm sure he'll do it for you in the year ahead. So in 2021, maybe this motto will work for you. Be still and get a move on. Be still and turn to the Lord. Be still and remember what the Lord has done. Be still and watch the Lord act. And, and then get a move on. Be confident in the power of God. And be confident in the promises of God. And enjoy your journey through 2021 with the power and the promises of the Lord. Have a blessed and wonderful new year and look forward to seeing you again soon. Let me just close out in prayer and ask God to bless our, our new year ahead and May God go with you and grant you the richest blessings as you enter 2021. Father in heaven, thank you for this account from Exodus 14 that, 
not only was a, a piece of, of history in the past, but as a present reality of, of your power and promises to act and how you glorified your name by delivering Israel. When they thought everything was lost and they were ready to turn back to Egypt and the slavery there. Lord, as we move into 2021, we don't know what, what is ahead. You do. But we pray that in our year ahead, we are not discouraged when we see that it feels like everything is lost around us, but rather we turn to you and, and we see the hope and the joy and the, the, the peace and the, and the love that you give us in Christ. And so, Lord, teach us to be still, to turn to you, to remember what you've done and then watch you act. And then give us confidence to move on with your power and your promises in front and behind us. Lord, go with us into 2021 and we look forward to the journey ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless your day and God bless your week and God bless your new year.